Chapter 3 The next day the sun rose. Coraline's mother took her to the nearest largest town to buy clothes for, for school. They dropped her father off at the railway station, who was going for London for the day to see some people. Coraline waved him goodbye. They went to the department where her store to buy the school clothes. Coraline saw some day-glow green gloves she liked a lot. Her mother refused to buy them for her, preferring instead to buy white socks, navy blue school underpants, four gray blouses, and a dark gray skirt. But mom, everybody at school has got the same, got the gray blouses and everything. Nobody's got green gloves. I could be only one. Her mother ignored her. She was talking to the shop assistant. They were talking about which kind of sweater to get Coraline, which are green to feel better on the embarrassing large and baggy, the hopes of one day she might grow out of it. Coraline wandered off in sort of display of willin and blues so shaped like frogs and ducks and rabbits. And she wondered back, Coraline, oh, there you are. Where on earth are you? I was kidnapped by aliens, said Coraline. They came down out of outer space with ray guns, but I fooled them by wearing a wig and laughing in a forking accent, and I escaped. Yes, dear, I think you can come home with some hair clips, don't you? No. Well, let's say a half a dozen. He'll be on the safe side, said her mother. Coraline didn't say anything. In the car back home, Coraline said, What's the in the empty flat? I don't know. Nothing I expect. It probably looks like our flat before we moved in empty rooms. Do you think uh, you can go from, the, from the, our flat? Not unless you can walk through bricks, dear. Oh. When they got home, about lunchtime, the sun was shining through the day with cold. Coraline's mother looked in the fridge and found, found a sad little tomato and a piece of cheese with green stuff growing on it. There was only a crust in the bread bin. I had better dash to the shops to get some fish fingers or something, said her mother. Do you want to come? No, said Coraline. Sue yourself, said her mother and left. Then she come back and got her purse and car keys and went out again. Coraline was bored. She flipped through the, a book her mother was reading with the native people in a distant country. How about every day would take pieces of white silk and draw them in wax, then dip it in silks in a dye and dry the wax and dye some more. Then to boil the wax of hot water and finally a beautiful cloves on a fire and burn them to ashes. It seemed pretty pointless to Coraline, but she hoped people enjoyed it. She was still bored. Her mother wasn't yet home. Coraline got a chair and pushed to the kitchen door, and she climbed to the chair and reached up. She got down and got a broom from the cupboard, and she climbed back into the chair again and for the room. The trink. She, she climbed down to the chair and picked up the keys. She smiled triumphantly. Then she leaned the broom against the wall and went into the drawing room. Uh, the family did not use the drawing room. They had inherited the furniture room that Coraline's grandmother along with a wooden coffee table, a side table, and heavy glass ashtray, and oil pointed out at a bowl of fruit. Coraline could never work out with anyone would want to paint a bowl of fruit and other than that. The room was empty. There was no knickknacks, no wooden pieces, no house clocks, anything that made her feel comfortable living in. The old black key felt colder than the others. She pointed the key hole smoothly with the satisfying clunk. Coraline stopped and listened. She knew what she was doing. There was something wrong and she wanted to listen to her mother coming back when she heard nothing. Coraline put her hand on the doorknob and turned it. Finally, she opened the door. It opened to a dark hallway. The bricks had gone as if they weren't there. There was a cold, musty smell coming from the open doorway. It smells like something very old and very slow. Coraline went through the door. She wandered through when it was empty, flat, like if with a corridor led. Coraline walked into a corridor uneasily. There was something very familiar about it. The carpet beneath the feet had the same carpet they had in their flat. The wallpaper was the same. The same wallpaper they had on the furniture hanging from the wall. The same that they had hanging in the door hallway at home. 
She knew where she was. She was in her home. She hadn't left. She shook her head confused. She started with the picture hanging on the wall. No, it wasn't exactly the same. The picture hung already on their own. The hallway, a boy with old-fashioned clothes staring at some bubbles. The only expression face was different. He was looking at the bubbles like he was planning to do something very nasty in, uh, to them. And there was something particular about his eyes. Coraline stared at his eyes to figure out what it was exactly what was different. She had almost... Somebody said, Coraline? It sounded like her mother. Coraline went into the kitchen and the voice came from a woman. Stood in to the kitchen and who had Coraline. She looked like Coraline's mother only. Her skin was white as paper. Only she was taller and thinner. Her fingers were too long and they never stopped moving. Her dark red fingernails were so was curved and sharp. Coraline, the woman said, is that you? Then she turned around. Her eyes were big black buttons. Lunchtime, Coraline, said the woman. Who are you? asked Coraline. I'm your other mother, said the woman. Now go tell your other father that lunch is ready. She opened the door of the oven. Suddenly Coraline realized how hungry she was. It smelled wonderful. Well, go on. Coraline went down the hall and where her father's study was. She opened the door and there was a man there sitting on the keyboard and the back door. Hello, he said. Coraline. Uh, said Coraline. I mean, I say that lunch is ready. The man turned around. His eyes were buttons, big and black and shiny. Hello, Coraline. He said, I'm starving. He got up and went for lunch in the kitchen. They sat at the table. Coraline's other mother brought some lunch. A huge golden brown roasted chicken, fried potatoes, tiny green peas. Coraline shoved the food in her mouth. It tasted wonderful. We've been waiting for you for a long time, said Coraline's other father. For me? Yes, said her other mother. If we were the same here without you, but we know how to revive who we arrived in a day, then we will have to be a proper family. Would you like some more chicken? It was the best chicken that Coraline had ever eaten. Her mother sometimes made chicken, but it was always out of pocket. Packets are frozen, and it was very dry. I would have tasted anything. When Coraline's father cooked the chicken, he brought real chicken, and, and they sent the strings to it, like sewing it in wine, or stuffing it with prunes, or baking it in pastry. Hmm. Coraline would always refuse to touch it on and on a principle, she took on more chicken. I don't know. I had an. I don't know. I had it on another mother," said Coraline cautiously. "Of course you do. Everyone does," uh, asked the other her mother, <laughs> her black eyes gleaming. After lunch, I could rise and play in your room with the rats. The rats from upstairs. Coraline never seen a rat except on television. She was quite looking forward to it. It was turning around to be. An interesting day, after all. After lunch, uh, after her parents and washing up, and Coraline went down the hall in the other bedroom. It was different from her bedroom at home. Sort of, it was painted off of the putty in a shade of green and a particular shade of pink. Coraline decided it won't go down to have, uh, have to sleep in there. The color scheme was awful, a lot interesting in her own bedroom. There was a lot of sorts of remarkable things she had never seen before. The wind-up angels fluttered around the bedroom like uh, sparrows. Books that uh, withered and crawled and shimmered like dinosaur little dinosaur skulls chattered their teeth and they passed the little toy box with, uh, with wonderful toys. This is like it, thought Coraline. She looked at the window outside the view with the same well, the bedroom trees, fields, and other beyond them with horizon and distant purple hills. Something black scurried across the floor and vanished under the bed. Coraline got down on her knees and looked at the bed. Fifty red eyes stared back to her. Hello, said Coraline. Are you the rats? They come out of bed blinking their eyes. In the light, they had short, snood-like fur, black fur, red, little red eyes, pink paws, and tiny hands. Their pink hairless tails like long, smooth worms. Can you talk? She asked. The largest rock of the rats uh, shook his head in an unpleasant sort of smile. Coraline thought. Well, asked Coraline, what do you do? The rats formed a circle. They began to climb on top of each other carefully. They swept uh, like a pyramid on top of the largest rock on the top. The rats began to sing in a high, whispery voices. We have teeth and we have tails. We have tails and we have eyes. 
We are here before you fell. We were here before you rise. It was a pr it wasn't a pretty song. Corlang was sure she had heard it before. Something although it was unable to remember her exactly where. Then the pyramid fell apart. The Rasmican scampered fast and black towards the door. The other crazy old man upstairs was standing in the doorway, holding a tall black hat in his hands. The rats was scampered up, burrowing his pockets and his shirt and his trouser legs down his neck. The largest rat came to the old man's shoulders, throwing up the long gray mustache past the big black button eyes out to his top of the man's head. In seconds, the only evidence that the rats were were at the restless lumps of the edge of the man's clothes, forever sliding into place around place across them. There was still the largest rat who stared down on glistening red eyes at the corn line from the man's head. The old man put on his hat and the rat was gone. Hello, corn line, said the other old man upstairs. I heard that you were here. The, the rats have gave you uh, their dinner. Will you come up with me, if you like, and watch them feed? It was there was very hungry at the old man's button eyes that made Coraline feel uncomfortable. No, thank you, she said. I'm going to explore. The old man nodded very slowly. Coraline could hear the rats whispering to each other. They could not tell what they're saying. She was certain that the I don't know why they're saying. Her other parents stood in the doorway, the kitchen doorway. She walked in the corridor, smiling and did little smiles, waving slowly. Have a nice time outside, said her other mother. We'll be here when we come back, said her other father. When Coraline got to the front door and turned back, they still was watching her and waving and smiling. Coraline walked outside and down the steps.